talking of other arenas, as you just mentioned, Krisha. Let's look now at developments in the Red Sea. The Israeli Air Force saying it thwarted an aerial threat. And for the first time since the start of this war, the Arrow long-range defense system was used following apparent moves out of Yemen. Explosions were reported in the Eilat area with two drones reportedly intercepted. A spokesman for the Iranian-backed Houthi militia claiming responsibility, saying just a short while ago, quote, this is a third operation in support of their brothers in Palestine. Let's listen to the official statement. Our armed forces launched a large barrage of ballistic and winged missiles and a large number of drones at various targets of the Israeli enemy in the occupied territories. This is the third such strike in support of our brothers in Palestine. We will continue to carry out attacks with missiles and drones until the end of the Israeli aggression. So for more insight, we now welcome Catherine perez Shakdam, director of the Forward Strategy and expert on Iran, Yemen and radical movements, joining us from London. Catherine, so much appreciate. Thank you very much for your time. So just when we're talking about threats out of Lebanon, threats out of Gaza, we now are talking about threats out of Yemen. Your take on this latest rhetoric out of the Houthis, the Iranian-backed Houthi militia, claiming responsibility for what, as we just heard, it calls its third operation targeting Israel. Your insights. Well, I think for me, I mean, my main takeaway from the statement that was just released that you add um, is the fact that the, the spokesperson uh, for the Houthi spoke about the access of resistance. And I think that is very important, very key, because this is the first time that the word has been mentioned. Um, and it gives you a very clear signal coming out of Tehran and the Islamic Republic of Iran that it's trying to activate actually more than just trying, it just did, activate its axis of resistance. And that Israel is clearly under threat, not just by Hamas or Hezbollah or even Syria, but not directly Yemen. And I think that Iran is hiding behind its proxies. And the international community will need to realize, I would, I would hope rather early, um, that Israel is facing a, a war against terror um, that concerns the West as well, because I'd like to remind everyone that Tehran's favorite slogan is death to America, death to Israel in that order. And that even though I would say the main theater of war is right now um, against Israel and in Israel, um, it concerns everybody. And I think that this is 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 lacking from the conversation, the the broader conversation that we're having across the world is that everyone thinks that Israel is facing this war um, and that it only concerns Israel. It's not. It's a global war. And the theaters are also playing in the streets of our Western capitals. Um, and I, I would beg people to really pay attention and wake up to the to the reality that we're facing today. This is not just against Israel, it's against the West. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I'd like to make that clear. And the attack today by the Houthis against Israel make that abundantly clear. You're talking to us from London, talking about the fact that the West could be next and the way the West might respond. Your sense of the demonstrations and the protests that have unfolded in different parts varsity campuses, in the streets, in London, in the United States as well. What is your take on the reaction to what is unfolding right now in this part of the Middle East? Look, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be speaking from my personal experience and the fact that I've studied Islamic radicalism for many many years. I have over a decade of experience. I went to Iran. I spoke to these people. I know what they want. I know what they're about. One of the things that I warned against, um, and that actually the Minister for Security here in the UK admitted to, um, you know, beyond just the mapping out of the Jewish diaspora here in the UK by the Islamic Republic of Iran and its proxies, its agents, is the fact that they have agents in the UK and across the Western world, and that they. We're waiting for an opportunity to activate those those cells, those agents, those NGOs that they have, an extension of this axis of resistance that we're talking about today. And as you can see from the images on your screen right now, you have hundreds of thousands of people, and not all might be RSGC agents or even proponents of the ideology of the Islamic regime, but those people have been bought in and reeled into this narrative uh, of victimization, of victimhood, this weaponization of, of human suffering, not understanding that that what they're doing is playing right in the hand of fascism uh, and actually most of the time spelling out their own very end 
Because a lot of those people believe that they're defending the Palestinians. All they're doing is prolonging their suffering, not understanding that Palestinians are hostages of Hamas, a, a, a vile terrorist ideology that is being promoted and propped and aided and abated by the Islamic Republic of Iran. And this is a concern. A lot of people in the West, I'm afraid, you know, are ignorant of the realities on the ground in Israel. They do not understand. They're blinded by anti-Semitism. The left has decided to espouse the language of anti-Semitism and everything is being seen and understood and understood wow. through the lens of anti-Semitism. And you see the result today. Hundreds of thousands of people clamoring for the deaths of the Jews. This is an abomination. An abomination I have to indeed. Myself, to remind myself that this is not the 1930s. It is scary. The scenes unfolding are quite staggering. A lot to comprehend. Catherine Perry-Shakdam, appreciate your insight live from London. Thank you very much for speaking to us.